Hey everyone, welcome to the demo hosted by me, Andy. Today, we're gonna to be learning how to make found typefaces using just stuff you find around the house. So go to your bathroom, go to your closet, go to your garden and get some materials together because we are gonna get started. Today, I'm gonna to be using a bunch of rosemary that I got from my neighborhood. Uh, there's huge bushels all over it, uh, the place and it's uh, cheap and free, so that's why I'll be using it. It's also nice that it's bendable and pliable, which is really helpful for when you're making curvilinear uh, type forms and you know needing to manipulate that material. So keep that in mind. It's also nice that these have some little purple flowers on them because it uh, happens to be that time of the year. So that gives the uh, type form some really nice texture and difference so it's not too monotone with just the green. So this process involves printing out existing digital type forms and then arranging the material that we've chosen on top of them in order to give it a uniform and really clean shape and help use that as a guide. And to do that, we're gonna use a couple different types of paper. First, we're gonna use a large sheet of white paper as our background, which gives a nice clean surface to take the photos with and uh, clean up in Photoshop after we've already taken some images of it. I'm using 18 by 24 Bristol paper here because I like it. The second thing you're gonna need is some sort of translucent medium to place over your clean sheet of background paper. This will allow you to put the type uh, printed type forms underneath so that you can arrange the letters on top and then remove them without disturbing your process. I have two different options and some have benefits and uh, drawbacks, so let's talk about them. First, you can use acetate. You can get this at most art supply stores or even craft stores. Uh, you know, this is a pretty large sheet. I actually think it's larger than 18 by 24. But something to notice about it is that it's slightly reflective. So if you take photos of this, you have to be really careful of the glare in order to not that get that uh, in the picture as it's harder to remove in Photoshop than, uh, you know, say a matte background. So in order to do that matte background, I'm gonna be using tracing paper. Uh, tracing paper is, you know, has a matte finish and will be translucent enough that we'll be able to see the letter forms underneath. So, the next thing you're going to need with that paper is tape. I'm just going to be using scotch tape. It's cheap, and the tape really won't show up in the photo, so there's no need to uh, worry about using anything expensive or too sticky since this is all going to be light work on the desk. Another thing you're going to need is some sort of way to take pictures of the type form that you've created after it's finished. So there's a couple different options depending on what you have around your house. First off, you can use a cell phone or an iPad. Uh, you know, pretty easy. Uh, a lot of people have them, you know, even a friend or something might have them. But you need to be careful that the quality of your picture that you're taking is high enough that it doesn't start to affect the quality of the image that you're going to be editing in Photoshop. For my purposes, I have a couple cameras around the house uh, just from photography or recording a video like this. So I'm going to be using a DSLR camera, in this case, an Olympus OMD Mark II. Uh, it has, you know, just a relatively decent photo. It's not an expensive camera. Like anything more than even just a digital camera is a little bit of overkill since this is more an image about texture and uh, the object than high quality photography. Another thing if you're using a camera that will be incredibly helpful is a tripod. So uh, using a tripod will allow you to keep your DSLR camera in the same place that you have taken the photo of the previous type form, meaning that all of them will be roughly the same size, roughly the same resolution, and you won't need to do as much scaling to make them feel even in Photoshop around the final product. So uh, find what you got and use what you got. It's going to be cool either way. So one of the first things that we are going to want to do is find some nice fonts for us to use as a basis to make the found typeface from. 
So this is going to be very dependent on what material you're using and how you're able to manipulate that material. So if you're using Legos, it's going to be harder to get a smooth curve, seeing as you're using a lot of blocky elements unless you're using a curved Lego. So keep that in mind when you're looking for fonts. So I'm going to be using the Rosemary, like I said. So let's browse some fonts and start finding something good. And I like using Adobe fonts because you can activate the font right off of the cloud and I'm logged into my account up here and once you activate that font you are able to access it across all your Adobe cloud products and it just keeps it really easy so you know the tags are one thing I'm gonna use uh, the classifications to you know help narrow down what's good you know and and we're gonna want something pretty basic here so I'm gonna start with a sans serif you know, pretty clean. That starts to uh, cut it down. And I'm going to look into the weight here and like start thinking about what might work for the rosemary. I'm going to use a lightweight and start and see what they they have. Um, you know, we're going to have some really basic ones. Uh, I mean, you can see here that there's 40 pages of fonts, so you can get really, really deep into this. And it all depends on what you're looking for and the effect you're trying to achieve. Oh, Futura. I personally love Futura. I've used it before. I think, you know, that's it's real cool. And if you click on Adobe Fonts, it's going to it's going to show this and uh, you know, show some examples. And over here, if you just click activate font, it'll flip a little switch. Now it's activated. And if I go and look in Adobe Illustrator, for example, you can just see right here on my Creative Cloud, it just gave me a little pop up that Futura Book Italic right here, or Book Oblique, was activated. I'm going to deactivate it because I want to. I don't really use condensed as much, but I'm going to activate all of them just because, you know, it's nice to have them there. And there was something else I saw back there that looked pretty cool, too. I think it was Trojan Sands here. And, you know, I'm getting all this, these notifications about how that is uh, happening. Yeah. Mm. You know, this looks cool at first, but it might not be exactly what I'm looking for. Uh... You know, it, it it seems like it could go really well with the rosemary, but, you know, it, it's just going to take some experimentation, frankly. But, yeah, I'm not too crazy. And it seems that they only have capitals here, so maybe, maybe not. So we got Futura. You know, you can, you can edit all of these, the X height, standard or caps only, uh, figure style, contrast... You know, we wouldn't want something that's too fat, such as this, because that might be a little more difficult to get that effect. So, you know, maybe we want something really wide, so it's easy to make and readable and thin. Let's just see what this, this starts giving us. Uh, you can see a lot of these fonts feel very, like, stretched out and posed. And there are good ones and there are bad ones, and it, it takes a little bit of experimentation picking out the fonts that you're looking for. Oh, this one's kind of interesting. Although I'm not quite sure why the T is. Novacento Sands. Oh. Yeah, this got this has some uh this has some juice to it. These are these are nice and clean and they look pretty simple to make. So you know what I'm gonna say Novacento too. We'll just activate all of these fonts here and oops and give us those options. All right. Nice. So let us create something new. And since I'm going to use a printer, uh, an eight and a half by 11, pretty standard. I'm going to change it to inches since I'm not really sure how to read points like that. And you can see this is eight and a half by 11. So, you know, that's really nice. Let's, let's get that. Uh, I'm going to keep it in a vertical format so that I can get a little bit uh, more space. 
So then I'm going to use the type tool. I'm going to hit T, which just activates the type tool over here. I really only need one layer for this. And I'm going to change this up here. And remember how I said that the the few uh, fonts you activate in Adobe font are just going to pop up? Well, here they are. Isn't that nice? So let's stick with the light because that's going to be pretty helpful. And little trick here is 72 inches equals one inch in height. So 36 inches is half an inch. So, but if you were to try and make this uh, out of the uh, rosemary like I have right now, it would be very difficult. You would, you'd basically get like one piece of rosemary uh, and, you know, that would be... <laughs> All you get to make the L or something out of. And we really want the strands to look rather large. So let's try and size it up. I'm going to say I'm going to want it really big. I'm not even going to worry about, uh, you know, what the point size is. I'm just going to scale it by I so that we get one letter. You know, let's start with capital A. A. Cool. We got that. Let's get it real big so it takes up the whole sheet of paper. I like that. Cool. All right. Uh, you know, it's not really important if it's super centered. Since this is not our final product, this is just the basis that we're working off of. And, uh, you know, I could imagine, you could imagine what this would look out of Rosemary, but let's change it to Nova Seto Sans and see which one we kind of like more. Here's Novaceto. Here's the condensed version. I'm going to click this just so I can get into Novaceto. Ah, oh, okay. Condensed, medium, bold, light. Cool. And, uh, you know, they seem pretty similar at first, and a lot of it has to do with, you can see how it was just a little bit wider in the Novaceto. Like, things such as, sorry, things such as this flat, cap here as opposed to the pointed cap aren't necessarily going to matter as much when we're remaking it, but um, it's more important to look at the overall general form and make sure that we are getting what we like. So why don't we take a few of these letters here and make sure that they are all of the... We can compare more letter forms to that. So we'll make this a B. C, oops, whoops, nope, B, C, C. You can really start to see like some of their differences. Like this is a very circular and open, and this is just a little bit more condensed. And you can see how its ends here are a little bit more pinched. Um, the B's actually seem to be very similar as well, but I, I still think I like this Nova set of sands more. So I'm going to type out the entire alphabet that and uh you know give myself see the entire alphabet as one whole thing so we're gonna need 26 letters it's gonna be a b c d so a quick tip if you hit d it'll keep doing the same thing oops i click something down there d e f g All right, so we've got all of, all right. So we've got all of our letters here and one random L that somehow got down there. And now we're just gonna take time to print out each letter so that we have one large letter on each, on a page. And we'll have 26, uh, sheets of eight and a half by 11 paper, each with its respective letter on the page. So, you know, you could make, I guess you could make 26 artboards and turn it into a PDF and then print it that way. You know, I think that might be the uh, fastest route here. So why don't we just do that? I'm just going to
take all of these, go down export, export as, let's do, you are probably wondering why I have all these strange photos. Uh, you'll see why they're for my podcast, but you know, it's things like that, that I guess you see when I, uh, am showing my desktop here, uh, more in the future. Let's do PDF. Um, hmm. It does not seem to want to do a PDF. So, you know, that's expected. So let's just do JPEG. We'll do artboards. Let's make a folder here, keep them all together so I'm not having a bunch of stuff all over. And make sure to click artboards so it doesn't export the whole thing. I'm just going to call them templates. Well, 150 is fine. Doesn't really matter about these settings, blah, blah, blah. So it's going to export it. I'm going to go to my desktop here. I have this folder with my desktop. We have all the forms and I am going to print these out and on 11 by 17 paper, making sure that uh, each one makes it. So now let's move on to making some of these forms and setting up our desk. So here's my setup with the paper uh, taped flat on my desk, my tripod set up with my camera facing 90 degrees onto the working surface and a very well lit room. Uh, I also have a LED box light on top of my camera in order to light the letters a little bit better. Uh, but anything really to illuminate them for your pictures is really going to help out here. So you can see a close up of the working surface here. I have my stack of printed out letters ready to go you know, organized in the correct alphabetic order. And I have a sheet of tracing paper hinge taped over the clean white Bristol paper so I can lift it up and place it down as needed uh, in order to get the letters uh, in and out. Uh, there's a little close up of the hinge tape. It's basically just scotch tape on one edge of the paper, nothing too fancy. And I'm gonna start off by placing the first letter A under that tracing paper and making sure I can get everything as flat as possible uh, and ensuring that it my camera is focused on the right area so that I can just take a picture. And now I have to start playing around with the materials and finding good pieces to make this letter form out of. And you can see how, you know, already these strands of rosemary are much larger than the uh, letter itself that I printed out just because uh, I didn't have any larger paper. And so it's gonna require either finding smaller strands or manipulating the rosemary in some way that it uh, fits and into the proportions of that letter form. So I believe at this moment I got some scissors, got some other uh, pieces, you know, just checking to see what works here, what I like. You know, some might be too curved, some might be straighter than others, and now I'm going to start cutting there. So I like the tips of the rosemary, so I measure out how much I need just with my fingers and cut off uh, what I don't need of the base down to its side. And then I take a little uh, watercolor brush and use that as sort of a broom to mop away any debris throughout the process in order to keep my surface clear because the less sort of stuff that I have, the better. And right there, I just snapped it in half so it sits a little flatter on the page like I like. And I'll be doing that a lot through this process in order to get curves, in order just to manipulate my material to get the look that I want. So don't be afraid to you know, break some stuff, cut some stuff, like have some extra lying around so you don't feel too precious about your material. You know, there I cut it again, put the extra off to the side. Those little bits will actually become really useful later when I need uh, little fillers to kind of fill in bald spots of other strands that I use. And brushing away any debris, just keeping my surface clean. There you go. 
actually a lot of my process was just cleaning up stuff here. It's uh, kind of funny how much time that, that takes. Is uh, It's probably about a third of the time. There I go. Brush again, brush again. Any brush will really work, and it's uh, nice because then you don't have to like get your fingers in there, and you, you your fingers might get dirty, and you don't want to smudge your paper. You just you want to try and keep that as clean as possible. All right, arrange the final form. Voila, and I'm liking how it looks, so I'm gonna take my picture here. I'm gonna make sure that everything is clear. I'm gonna try and flatten out the paper as much as I can. And then I'm going to just gently lift it up and gently remove the letter from underneath. So I no longer need that trace. There it is, outside of the paper, putting that to the side. No longer need to look at that. One final cleanup. Brush, 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 brush. Good. I hope you guys don't get annoyed at that, but I'm also not editing it out. So it is what it is. So now I turn on my camera and turn on my camera light to get a nice flat uh, white background, really even lighting. Take my photo, make sure it's good. I take two photos here just to you know edit my settings and make sure they're exactly what I want. And uh, you know the ensuring and setting up everything in the beginning is a really good way to save yourself a lot of time. Uh, famous carpenters, uh, saying is measure twice and cut once. So here I am measuring, you know, playing with my camera a little bit. And when I'm all done, I'm going to remove, turn off my light and everything because I, it runs off of batteries. I'm just going to remove all my stuff. And I like these strands. I think I'll be able to use them again. Uh, so I'm going to set them to the side. And throughout the process, I find that I tend to use a lot of the same pieces that I made over and over just because the uh, typeface tends to have a lot of the similar forms. So now I'm going to repeat the process with the B, slide the B under there to use it as a guide for where I'm placing my things. I got a little more comfortable at where the uh, letter and the camera will line up. See, I, I took the old piece that I was already using, and I'm using it again. I, but I, you know, maybe orient it in a different way, just get a different angle, make sure that things aren't uh, looking too samey samey. You want to keep it a different. You know, here I'm trying out those leftover pieces. I actually try and bend and break that piece, but it tends to be uh, too thick because it was down to the base of where that was growing, and so it wasn't breaking as easily. So I take a more bendable and pliable piece. And I believe it's uh, off camera here, but I bend and snap it a little by little. God, I wish I did this in camera now that I'm looking at it. <laughs> Once again, you know, first time. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Look, I'm just taking it and breaking it gently across its uh, spine there to just create a bunch of little kinks that I can use to bend and fold this. So basically not breaking it and ripping it apart, just breaking it so it's pliable and I can get that curve. So that's really the entire process there. I didn't, you know, it's just cutting, breaking, arranging, uh, removing the letter and uh, from underneath, taking the photo and then starting all over again. So I'm gonna speed this up just so you don't have to watch this uh, entire process of the whole alphabet and you don't have to hear me make more brush sound effects. So yeah, enjoy the show.
All right, guys, now that we have the shots that we need and we're done arranging all of our found objects, we need to edit the photos so that we get clean cutouts of each individual letter so we can arrange them in whatever way we want. First, we're going to be doing a batch edit in Adobe Bridge, seen here, and then we'll take it into Photoshop to really clean it up and give it a, a nice look and color to call it a finished product. So let's get started. I'm going to open up uh, one of these here. I like the B a lot, so I'm going to open up. And the idea is, is we're going to copy uh, the settings that we edit onto this one letter and then apply it to all the others. And I've already made settings on this H here, and you can see that due to this little icon right here. Um, but I'm going to go through it again in order to show you what we did and for what purpose. So I'm going to copy this over. I'm actually just going to open up the H to show you what happened and what we did. So when you double click on the raw image like I have in Adobe Bridge, it's going to bring up a camera raw editor as seen here. Um, if you've seen other videos about camera raw editing or played around with Instagram, a lot of these settings will seem very familiar. And what we wanted to do, toggle to default, cycles before, before and after. Uh, there we go. So here you can see the before and after view. We have something that's a lot less dim and not as well lit. Even though I took this with, you know, a relatively well lit setup, you can still see the texture of the paper and it's very gray and so on and so forth. So what we want to do is we want to brighten everything up so that this uh, letter form is incredibly readable, in this case the H. We also want to flatten and make the background as singular of a white as possible. We want to do that in order so we can cut it out later. So let's go back to the object here. There we go. And you can see uh, I changed the temperature just a little bit. This is actually pretty close to the settings that my camera was shooting. I've increased the exposure in order to make the whole thing brighter. I've increased the contrast just to, uh, you know, once again, make contrast between the background and the letter form in front with those bright colors. I've maxed out the highlights. You know, you can, if we could take this to zero, you can see the difference. Uh, it's still showing up here in the... There we go. Um, it's still before and after. So I'm going to take it all the way up again. And like you can see how much of a difference that makes in making that white background just like all blend together. The shadows, I have lightened a little bit. You know, I just thought that, like, bringing them up could be helpful in, in helping this read. It doesn't need to be super dark within the form itself. Here again, the whites, we're blowing them out. Like, you can see, though, if you go too far, it starts to affect the readability of the letter. So I would keep this. I'm even going to bump it up for my previous one. I'm going to make it a 50. I'm going to get rid of this before and after thing as well. And here the blacks, like, if I take this to zero, kind of has a little bit more readability. Maybe I went a little, got a little too excited that first time around. I'm going to just bump them up a little bit to make the letter form more readable and not as harsh. I don't want a lot of blacks in here. I want, I want the colors. I'm going to leave all of these alone. They don't really, aren't going to really affect what we're dealing with here. You can see if I, like, really bump it up, it just kind of, like, you know, messes it. Maybe I'll give it plus 10 on texture because it is textured clarity see clarity just messes up the whole image let's not do that and then we have uh vibrance and saturation i really want these flowers and this this uh green of the rosemary to pop so i'm not gonna do most of my color boosting and vibrance i just think vibrance has a better overall effect than saturation and you know i'm just gonna give a little saturation too why not you know you can see if you start getting really high it looks very artificial very quickly so like let's not you know we want a natural look to these but we do want them to look fresh and alive and you know show their best side so why not give them a little boost 
Cool. So once you're all done with your camera settings, if you hit open, it's gonna take it into uh, it's gonna take it into Photoshop, and you can start doing your edits from there. But if you click done, it's just gonna save those settings into Adobe Bridge here. Now I want to copy these settings and place it on all my letters so that I am able to just go in there and really work from a good base and not have to do the same amount of editing for each one to remember the settings even. So I am going to go down here to develop settings into its menu and say copy settings. Boom. Now we've copied this little setting here. Now we just need to select all the other uh, all the other letter forms in order to get what we need. Oh, look at it. I didn't know you could do a drag and drop window. I'm still learning things. And once you have everything selected, you're going to go to paste settings. Boom. And it's going to bring up a menu. It's going to ask what things do you want to, uh, paste of the settings. I'm just going to stick with the default, keep everything, uh, basically just says all of the camera raw settings. Now you can see that all the letters are uh, coming in, looking real good, and are a lot more readable. I mean, even now you can just see from these basic previews how much more white the background is and how much easier that's going to be to save us uh, some time. So let's open up one of the letters, and I particularly like this B. I think it'll be good for our, our usages because it's uh, it's eyes in the letter form you have to you know work with here. So I'm going to double click it. It's going to again come up with the camera raw settings. Sure, I like them the way they are. I'm not going to you know try and mess with them. You you could mess with them more, but since I kept a pretty consistent lighting on this the whole time, I don't want to mess with it. So I'm going to then rotate the image just so I can be looking at the B, the uh, right side up here. Control zero allows us to view the whole frame. I'm going to then select, well, first I'm going to duplicate the background just because, you know, we we'll want to save that image if I mess up. I'm going to take the magic wand tool over here. I'm going to set the tolerance to 10. You know, some people would maybe caution against the magic wand tool, say, you know, it's it's kind of janky, but, you know, I actually find a lot of use for it, and if you get the settings right with this tolerance and, uh, you know, where you're clicking, you can actually get some really, really clean effects. So I'm just going to click the white background. And you can see it starts to get actually a pretty decent amount, but it didn't get these corners that are a little outside of that tolerance. So I'm going to hold down shift, and I'm going to continue to click on these colors on the places where it's not selected and you can see it's already doing a lot of work by selecting you can see the little marching ants uh, uh, they were always called for me you can see they've even gone in here and selected this and that's because i didn't have this contiguous uh, option checked if i had checked contiguous we would be having to select the interior parts as well and i'm going to get really in here and start clicking on these little edges here just to really get a, a clean or really get all the the white I can. And then I'm just going to do this. I'm going to go over here and click layer mask. Oop, did the invert. So I'm going to hit control I on the layer mask. So it then inverts the thing to its inside. And then I'm going to create a layer underneath and I'm just going to give that a flat white background by filling this using the command shift F5 or you can go into edit uh, fill. This is just the fill command. I'm going to fill it with my foreground color, which is currently blank white and do that. Cool. So now I have that and I can, you know, get in, check. I, I got everything, you know, some of the, it's not a hundred percent perfect. Like you can start to see like even right here, got a little overzealous and it started taking out bits and highlights in the uh, rosemary itself. And that's not what I'm looking for. This is uh, 
you know, although this is probably much higher resolution than you'll be viewing any of these letter forms, you know, we want it to be good. So, like, let's not be shitty. So, I'm going to just keep Control z until I'm all the way back here. Back to my selection. I'm going to keep hitting Control z until I start getting that, uh, that selection again and back into my selection before I, you know, got too excited. So now if we look in here, I don't see any of those marching ants. Oh, I see a little right there. You know, I don't see as many. And, you know, for my R purposes, that's fine. Because uh, I'm just going to click this again. We're going to get that space. Yeah. Now we're going to do it all over again. Same thing. Layer mask. I'm going to invert the layer mask. You could also invert the selection, but, you know. Two different ways to milk a mouse, I suppose. Uh, Shift 5, fill that background, and now we can see what it looks like. Saw that there is some, there's some zhuzh happening over here. You know, maybe a little dot or something. Uh, you know, there's a broken piece of the rosemary there. Maybe I don't want that, so I'm going to go into the layer mask again. I'm going to take our brush tool and make sure it's black. And just use that to, like, delete that. You know, if you really wanted to get crazy, you could go in here and start to, like, clean up all this. I mean, that's a lot of work. I'm not going to do all that. And the reason is because when you're viewing the letter, like, back like this, it's very decorative. It has a lot of texture. It's not, most people aren't going to be reading it. And unless you are zooming in, like, crazy like this, you're not going to see it. I mean, you could use the select and mask with, uh with um that comes in photoshop but you know it's all about how much time you want to put it put in to it and what the final product is going to be so yeah i'm not really seeing any too many other points maybe that thing right there oh, no nope, that's just crap on my screen um yeah cool and i like that so now i am going to Duplicate this layer by hitting Control J again, and then hiding this, just in case I see something else, want to go back. Remember, non-destructive editing, guys. It'll save you a lot of time. Then I'm going to click the layer mask, right-click, and hit Apply Layer Mask. Boom. Now, if I hide all this, I have the B on a transparent background, but I'm going to keep it on a white background. And you could do a colored background, but... I would suggest a little trick uh, instead of coloring the black the background another specific color. I would go for coloring the entire image as a whole, and the reason why I say that is because it will not only make the figure of the B fit in more and feel more cohesive with the lighting of the of the background. It'll help make those shadows fit in too, and if you were to just put a colored background, like let's say, you know, I don't know, pink, just because it's on my color screen here. I'm going to add another layer here, shift F5 is fill. You can see that because we took it on a white background, all of a sudden we get these very peculiar white outlines from the lighting situation in our camera. So, how are we going to avoid that? We are going to use 3D LUTs to just color the whole thing. First, I'm going to command T my, my B here. I'm going to move it over just a little bit and kind of center it. I think a little, and I took these and arranged them by hand. A little bit of transformation like that really goes a long way to making them feel the like correct letters. Next, I'm going to create a layer of color lookup above a what is this called adjustment layer there we go i forget the name sometimes even though i've been doing this for so long and i really like this because you can download these kinds of settings off of um anywhere really you can buy them in packs and if some from professional photographers who've made uh different ones and basically they just edit the overall color adjustments of the image it's kind of like a very fancy instagram filter in fact it's very much exactly like a very fancy instagram filter and i particularly like the fuji and the kodaks down here i think they give a nice effect so you know you can see that all of a sudden we get this light pink background and then if you zoom in see because we're using a white background we might have like that pink backing but we 
don't need have that weird highlight um, that we did before and it's because we're editing the entire image and the lighting setting in the whole image i thought that the yellow works particularly well or the fuji eterna 250 uh 250d whatever you know and that's because i'm using a lot of purples and greens and it just like it makes a really nice color scheme and so there that's your final image and you know once again you're like oh but i don't like this 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 scrubbiness here like in this what is going on and you know i don't blame you like i wouldn't say you know if i was doing this for a client um and they needed something like a billboard i would not you know i would take the time to clean this up more but since this is probably going to be in a poster size we're not gonna have to worry about it because let's look at this image size so my camera took this at 11.52 like a strange resolution i mean i'm sure if i turned it into pixels it makes a lot more sense it doesn't make any more sense, but <laughs> but it's 4,000 pixels or in inches, it's uh, 15 by 300. So you can imagine you could double this size and it could be a 30 inch image at 150 uh, pixels per inch resolution and still be relatively clear or even size it down a little bit. And uh, yeah, it'll it'll work for your purposes. And when when the image and the letter form is as textured as this, you don't necessarily need the, the perfect cleaning of, of the shadows like that. But if you are very interested, I can show you where all that is. Let's go all the way back to this letter form. If you hit, or the original really, hit Control J, we're all the way back to the original. Let's go to this and start, you know, clicking, doing the, selecting the white again real quick. You know, get all this. You can use this select and mask tool to really help get what you want. Oh, let's, let's invert it for this case. Control shift I inverts your selection, select and mask. Uh, and you can use this menu here. I'm not going to go into it for this demo, but you can go in and really begin to select these shadows here of, of what you're looking for uh, in order to get a really clean sort of uh, look to it. You can see how it's already starting to happen. It, it kind of functions like a smart brush tool. But like I said, I'm not doing that. I don't think my even my letters need it. I don't think it's even going to be noticeable when it comes to the final product. So, boom. Yeah, I uh, hope you like this demo, guys. I hope you make lots of cool found type. And, uh, you know, looking forward to seeing it. Have a good one.